welcome to Doofy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And this is the unicorn that I have been chasing for years. Say hello to the cheapest Hellcat in the USA with a clean title. A 2016 Dodge Challenger with the Hellcat supercharged Hemi under the hood, six-speed manual transmission, and I bought it for only $26,000. As you can see, uh, it is in pretty rough shape. Like the starter's heat soaked. Come on. I've been waiting for this day to happen for over eight years after watching Doug DeMiro's video, a very early Doug video where he looks like a literal child and he drove Street Speed 717's Hellcat, a similar spec to this, almost crashed it and it was one of the first times that he ever did sort of a quirks and features segment on the car. And this at the time, January 2016, was before I had Hoovy's Garage and maybe I had $5,000 to my name and was very, very excited at the thought of this becoming a cheap used car at some point, but that has never happened. Thanks to terrible choices and mismanagement at Stellantis that has made this car an instant classic. Its replacement is an EV and it's, well, we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's focus on this incredible piece of hooptydom right here, a 2016 Hellcat that is a one owner, clean title vehicle that I bought for only $26,000. And it has 70,000 miles on it, so not super high mileage. Six speed manual, pearl white paint, original MSRP, almost $70,000, came from the factory with this matte hood and uh, $26,000, an absolute steal. But, well, you saw the nose. Uh, yeah, the one owner was a Florida man, and he said watch this at least four times and something bad happened because it has four accidents on the Carfax. Yes, four, but none that are serious. I bought this thing sight unseen at an auction and hoped it was good, but I assumed maybe the Hemi was blown up or it has a bad transmission or a burned out clutch or who knows, frame damage, and it doesn't seem to have any of that. My third Stellantis product in a year, the first two total disasters. This one might finally be the one that doesn't bite me in the... But before we get into things, I would like to thank Purity Debt Solutions for sponsoring today's video. Debt can be a soul-crushing thing, and I know because I was just about the most stressed I have ever been in my entire life lately with a house going over six figures, like multiple six figures over budget for the renovation, and at the worst, I had $100,000 in credit card debt. Thankfully, I was able to sell a few hoopties when things got too deep. Believe me, I know getting into debt is so easy, but getting out not so much. The system set up that we just can't win. And before you all were watching my YouTube videos, I did a lot of silly things that got me in a lot of debt. So really, I definitely understand. And PDS Debt strives to understand your specific scenario and can help provide alternative solutions to becoming debt free. PDS Debt has customized options for anybody struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills. So stop worrying and start saving. Get a free debt analysis right now at pdsdebt.com slash hoovies. It only takes 30 seconds. That's pdsdebt.com slash hoovies. pdsdebt.com slash hoovies. Now let's start the tour of the cheapest Hellcat in the USA. You saw the nose earlier. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is not, <laughs> not good. It definitely could have used those yellow splitter guards on this to protect uh, you know, this, this lower part here. Uh, unfortunately, it has ripped away from the fender. You can see that part's actually damaged there. And uh, all the other clips have completely come off to where this is loose. The fender, it does have some dings on it right here. And then the hood is also curled in a little bit and has dings across it. Also, we have the finish coming off of the satin hood here, but the Hellcat engine is still under there. It still exists, it hasn't been swapped out or this is a clone or something. No, this is a real deal Hellcat. And it does have the hidden intake right here, this dummy light that actually is an intake that Doug DeMiro uh, fisted eight and a half years ago. Here it is the same car in hoopty form. Now you go down the driver's side, actually not too much damage. The brakes 
big bare brakes that still look to be in pretty good shape. But I'll reserve final judgment until the car wizard does his thorough inspection, but the tires are definitely junk. You can see the Hellcat logo right here, and that name comes after a famous World War II fighter aircraft that launched off aircraft carriers. A really cool thing for a vehicle to be named after, but this body style, this retro throwback to the old Challengers came out several years prior to the Hellcat. Of course, you had the retro Mustang before, and then the retro Camaro followed. But the Challenger, in my opinion, was the best looking of that generation. The Mustangs and the Camaros, they got better looking as time went by. I think they nailed it with this, and they really didn't change it until it just went out of production. You can see the old school race fill cap, wider rear wheels, which this one uh, loses air pretty quickly. Once again, totally bald. You can see that rear valance there. This is all in really nice shape. I don't think there's a major impact in the rear. It arrived very, very dirty, and it still is, but I don't think there was any damage on the rear half of the car at all. You walk down the side, a little bit of damage in the doors on both sides as far as chips and things could be easily touched up. The roof in good shape. Some damage here on the mirror, but overall, it is a working functional Hellcat that looks pretty good from the outside minus this corner. When you go inside though, well, it gets uh, kind of rough. You see the auction stickers here. You open the door and the first thing you're greeted with is this horrible aftermarket speaker kit that takes up the entire bottom half of the door panel. And somebody decided to remove the speakers themselves before uh, they got rid of the car or it was repoed or who the heck knows what happened. And yeah, you have wires dangling there. It's worse on the other side. There's just holes. The cover is in the back. So somebody wanted these speakers, but otherwise very stock in here, except for these cheap sort of Hellcat headrests right here. There's some wear in the seats on the driver's side, but it's not torn. The passenger side being a Florida car, it does have, well, some wear and tear to it, but overall it's not disgusting. It, it doesn't smell very good. I think somebody was smoking some kind of substance in here, but overall it's not completely trashed. A lot of wear on the steering wheel, a lot of wear in the shifter, but overall this engine turn finish here, the dashboard, everything's still in very nice shape. So I think with some cleanup in the seats and some door panels, I'll be in good shape in here. But I'll pop the trunk and the hood. Let's start with the trunk because this sound system uh, I was supposed to continue into the back and it, look how dirty it is here in the jams, just ridiculous. And then this, uh, yeah, that's never a good sign when you see that. But this is a Hellcat that sat outside and rotted and it doesn't have a spare tire. The battery's just sort of sitting here all loose. And you can see there's all this wiring for a subwoofer that's uh, not around. It is the repo apocalypse for Challengers and Hellcats right now, but this does only show one owner on the Carfax. So I don't know if it was repoed. It doesn't say on there and I haven't gotten the title yet, so we'll see. But not necessarily with Hellcats. It's the lower Challengers and Chargers that aren't as desirable, are just plummeting in value. People are so upside down and uh, can't make the payments. They are letting the cars get repossessed, go back to the bank, and they can start over with bad credit. You're seeing a ton of them, but like I said, not many Hellcats. 707 horsepower, supercharged V8. You can see an aftermarket intake here, but otherwise not that rough. The shock towers look okay. They're not all crinkled up. You can look down Hard to see on camera, but the frame, we'll look at it again on the lift to see. Obviously the paint here is starting to come off, but nothing looks wrinkled or pulled. The fenders though definitely look like they have been off the car. They have been turned and removed and put back on. So it's pretty obvious something has happened, but 70,000 miles on the Hellcat engine, it is running fine with one butt. There is a strange leak though. It seems like the hood is getting really hot, touching on the coolant expansion tank, and you can see it's starting to leak and spray a little bit on the intake. So I can't drive it a whole lot. I can't drive it cross country right now, but this is something that I can pick up at J&J Auto Wrecking for like $80. So it's not very expensive. So the condition, I obviously can't complain about considering the price $26,000 and what the Carfax said. So I assumed it was going to be much, much worse. But yeah, a one owner vehicle. But on Christmas Eve 2017, it had disabled damage reported, vehicle towed, airbags not deployed on the front left. And then in 2019, April 9th, 
it had minor damage to the entire front end of the vehicle, but it wasn't totaled out. And then in May 25th, 2021, more damage was reported. And again, minor damage reported September 2nd, 2022 accident reported damage to right front damage to front, which I'm guessing is this four incidents on the Carfax with one owner on this Hellcat. And uh, yeah, when you drive them, it's it's very easy to see why 700 horsepower with very little traction to keep that 700 horsepower on the road uh, makes for a recipe of hilarious fun, but also disaster. But the astonishing thing is this $26,000 hoopty was the most powerful muscle car ever when it came out 707 horsepower and it was only bested by its successors, the demon and such. But this hoopty is more powerful than any of the supercars behind it. And it has that old school gated manual driving experience that makes it so much fun. So let's take it out for a cruise. A huge problem currently with chargers and challengers is how often they are stolen because of how easy they are to steal. Thanks to these transponder keys, you're able to hack them by waving a wand close to the key in the house, cloning it, and they're able to start the Hellcat. But that's not an issue with mine because my key's not transponding at all. So to start it, I literally have to touch the start button here for it to detect the chip and run. Maybe it needs a battery, maybe it needs more, but uh, until that's fixed, I don't have to worry about it being stolen. So that's nice. This thing is a big old boat, but I do really want to see for myself if it is indeed the most powerful and fastest car of the Hoopty fleet. So I thought before we drive it too far, I'd line it up with my Ferrari 599. horsepower with that Enzo V12, but it's been tuned with that manual conversion to over 700 horsepower. And with the manual transmission conversion, it's sort of apples to apples, but that six speed conversion cost almost double what this entire Challenger Hellcat cost. So not really apples to apples. We know the supercharged Hemi is pretty potent. So we'll see. Stop beeping. I know you can't recognize the key fob, but you got to stop. You just have to stop. <sighs> Someday. All right. Three, two, one, go. It's neck and neck. And the big difference is traction on this car, which with some tires that would hook up from the line, uh, I think this thing would beat the 599, but at minimum, it does keep out. The Ferrari's still up by a nose because this one is a bit of a hoopty, but we're at 10%, 15% of the value of the 599. They were nose to nose despite the massive disparity in engine design and price difference in everything, but I think the Challenger would have an edge with some decent tires on it. Now, I bought this thing, it showed up, well, it had uh, no oil in the dipstick, so we added a quart, a flat tire in the left rear, which it slowly leaks out, maybe five or 10 PSI a day. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to pick it up on the audio, but there's a little bit, there's a little bit of a tick. Obviously the exhaust has been cut out of it as well, but it does have a tick to it that could be the infamous Hemi tick. That's a lifter problem that requires a tear down or much more common and likely it is an exhaust leak. So I'm hoping it's just a bad header or a loose exhaust bolt, something like that. But I have been chasing this Hellcat in particular for months since March, it popped up at auction at a dealer wholesale and it was a dealer at first and I offered $29,000. I think they wanted 32 or something like that and they declined, they held firm. But then it popped up again, this time being sold <laughs> by the auction itself, which means they probably tried to sell it and had some kind of guarantee that the car came back for whatever reason. And then it's on the auction, not the seller, the telling dealer to dispose of it. And they only wanted $29,000 for it. Uh, but being a shrewd negotiator and since it's the internet and anonymous, I lowballed them for 26 and they said yes. So I really thought something serious was wrong, but as you saw earlier in the little drag race, no, just 
Pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls. Great power, transmission shifting perfectly, but when you do get up to the high speed, it, it starts shaking. The, the wheels, the tires are, are terrible. Stops good. It tracks straight and you turn off the traction control and well, it makes a big old mess of the tires. <laughs> Jeez. Dangerous, dangerous. Turn it back on. We're not gonna give it its fifth accident on the Carfax, but this really doesn't feel like anything exotic at all when you drive it. That's the thing about the Challenger, even compared to the Mustang or the Camaro ZL1, uh, this feels like a big old boat in comparison. It is not the tightest handling vehicle in the world by far, and you feel like you're just in a big comfy land yacht. Oh geez, don't go much over 60. Yeah. Obviously I have issues to address there. But you can see the one key that I do have is the red key and I can hit the super track pack. And you can see I can change the settings. The air conditioning works. Everything works on this car. Even the stereo with the holes for the speakers, what stereos are still connected. It works with the radio and turns on. I just have no bass at all. It's a fully functional car that cars. With recent purchases that I've had, especially the Stellantis products, the Maserati Ghibli and the Fiat 500e, this feels like a miracle. I am so, so happy. Car Wizard will be able to give this thing some TLC. I can replace the bumper and fix all the cosmetics and it'll be a very, very nice car. I know, I'm just as shocked as you. Well, this is a fun one. We're trying to do some droning and all this driving in the heat. It's like the starter's heat soaked. Come on. Well, obviously she needs some work, but still goes like hell. There'll be plenty of stuff for the car wizard to check out in the next video. And hopefully that uh, ticking noise isn't serious. And then the starter heat soak thing, which this started about uh, 30 minutes after we left on the side of the road, uh, can be corrected. But now it is story time. Time to explain why this has become an instant classic and why low mileage examples still bring close to their original MSRP eight years later, even though they made tens of thousands of these Hellcats. And it starts all the way back in 1966 when we had the birth of the 426 Hemi. The Hemi had been around for decades before. In the early 50s it came out, but it was a racing engine for a few years in the 60s, but they really needed to roll out a full civilian version to make it compliant with NASCAR and other racing regulations. So in 1966 you could get a Charger with a 426 Hemi. Hemi under the hood. I own a 1968 Charger with the 440, which is a larger engine, but not nearly as powerful as the Hemi, thanks to its special head design with the valves opposing each other and the domed piston that gives it the most power, the strongest combustion, and really a star was born. The winged warriors like the Superbird dominated in NASCAR. That all changed in 1971 when they retired the Hemi and gone were the days of the muscle car. Horsepower got choked thanks to emissions regulations and insurance mandates, making muscle cars basically all bark and no bite. And by the mid 70s with the oil embargo and the crisis, Mopar was way behind and had no idea how to build cheap, small economy cars and had to be bailed out by the US government. Until Lee Iacocca came along with a plan to save Chrysler and that involved uh, small cheap vehicles like the K car that was shared across all platforms and the muscle car sort of died as we know it. Chrysler continued on its own into the 90s until it was eventually bought up by Daimler AG, a merger of equals they called it, with Mercedes and Chrysler combining for a few years. They got rid of the PT Cruiser and all the lesser stuff and then brought back the Hemi again in Dodge trucks in 2003 with a marketing campaign that was brilliant. That eventually trickled down into the cars, the Chrysler 300, the Dodge Charger came back, and then this Dodge Challenger. This merger didn't last very long, and by the end of the 2000s, Mercedes and Chrysler split apart, and then the recession happened, and Chrysler filed for bankruptcy. But they were bailed out by the government again, and that's when Fiat came into the picture and started buying up Chrysler, eventually buying 
buying them outright. Fiat Chrysler turned into Stellantis, and that's what we have today. But the glory days of the muscle car continued into the 2010s. We had the Hellcat, we had the Demon, we had everything. But that all slammed shut in 2024. They retired the Charger and Challenger altogether, the name for a brief period, and the trucks lost the Hemi V8 entirely. Now the biggest engine you can get is an inline six twin turbo called the Hurricane that produces plenty of power, but it's very expensive and nobody wants to buy it. They're stacking up on lots and American buyers, especially Mopar fans, just can't stomach this new engine. So it's just piling up on lots. But even worse, the replacement for the Charger and Challenger is electric and uh, the pricing was actually just leaked on this thing. So brace yourselves. Uh, the base price for a normal charger is 68,570. And that is with the electric equivalent of 496 horsepower. Now, if you want the RT, you have to pay $82,170 to get 670 horsepower, which is still less than the 707 horsepower on this Hellcat for a lot, a lot more money. And yeah, it looks cool and the performance is great, but this is a vehicle that nobody asked for and nobody wants. Mopar fans that own these things, they're not going to want their loud Hemis to get traded in for an electric vehicle. And at that price, nobody is going to buy it. And that's why when you drive by a Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership, they're just lined up with rows and rows and rows of ridiculously overpriced cars that nobody's buying. The dealership principals, the management, the salesmen are really suffering, but the service departments are doing really well because the cars are just absolutely terrible quality. So they're failing for all kinds of reasons. And it seems like Stellantis with their ridiculous pricing that nobody wants to buy, the poor quality and making products that nobody wants. Nobody is buying these these cars. Nobody wants them. And uh, Stellantis doesn't seem to care at all. It's like they're happy to see America fail. They're making enough money in Europe to make up for it. And their strategy seems to be let's bankrupt as many dealers in the U.S as they can. It, it doesn't make any sense, but it's so grossly negligent and their products are so stupid that it seems like it's on purpose, like it's sabotage. And that is why this challenger right here is an instant classic. So for me to find the hoopty version of it, I'm very, very happy. Maybe I won't be happy when we go up to the car wizards in the next video, but for now, yeah, I think I'm sitting pretty good. Thank you so much for watching. Oh! 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 Oh!